Lucid's not a name you're probably familiar with, but their philosophy is to design and engineer the most desirable midsize EVs. <laughs> wow, this is nice. This is the Lucid Air Pure. Let's find out if it lives up to that. The Lucid Air Pure looks different from other EVs and definitely stands out when it's being driven on the road. The thing about the design here is that it's pretty curvy. You could see it's also low profile, very close to the ground. And it kind of helps because it allows it to be more efficient, more performance driven, less drag, in turn, better efficiency. And that kind of helps out too with some of the cutouts here where the wind goes through the vehicle. When you look at the bumper, it looks kind of aggressive. You know, you have a really wide front bumper here and you have a thin strip line there for the headlights. But yeah, it definitely has a sporty look to it. This is the Lucid Air Pure. It starts at $70,000, which kind of puts it in that luxury space for EVs, but it's unique because it has an 88 kilowatt hour battery, which makes it one of the most efficient EVs on the market. I've been given the opportunity to test drive this starting at Manhattan. Now I'm heading up to Bear Mountain where I'll drive it some more there. And I kind of want to answer the question of who's this car for? So Lucid says that they're trying to strive for that pinpoint between performance and efficiency. Now the first thing I noticed is that it is wider than most sedans and kind of like that because it just gives it a better responsive feel, especially when I'm making turns really quick. I can feel like the car is stable. It's not shifting as much. And it also has a pretty strong performance because even when I accelerate really quick, that responsiveness is really intense and right away. It definitely gives that illusion that it's kind of like a sports car because of its responsiveness and its quick acceleration. The first thing I noticed right away was that the regenerative braking was very aggressive, but I was at lower speed, so it kind of makes sense. But now here on the highway, I'm cruising along at 55 miles per hour. It's not as bad. I can definitely feel like the car is slowing down a little bit, but not as much if I was driving in the city. Even when I need that extra push, the acceleration is instantaneous. Whether it's the scenery here or the way it's performing right now as I'm driving, I could definitely see myself taking that for the weekend, maybe to the beach, and just have fun with it. It's not a stretch to see how enjoyable this could be. Inside, there's a lot of fabric material, which is different from the usual set that you see in other cars. I do like also the steering wheel. The steering wheel doesn't have the, that traditional circle. It has like this tapered off section here at the bottom. And as far as the aesthetics inside, I want to say they try to keep it as minimalist as possible, but not as minimalist as Tesla, but still almost to that same degree. You have this panoramic display in front of you, which is nice. I just wish that it was raised a little bit more because of course, you know, the steering wheel kind of blocks it. Now, as a luxury vehicle, it's missing some things that I've seen in other EVs. For example, the Kia EV9 had a heads up display. So the dashboard had a small tiny display, allows me to see some of my navigation, you know, my speed. I think it's useful because it's less distracting than looking down to see my current speed. So that's one thing that I noticed that this one doesn't have. Another feature I see in a lot of luxury cars is the blindside camera. So when you're turning, you're going to another lane, usually camera shows you somewhere in the dashboard, whether it's the main display or the one right here, but this doesn't have it. You do have those signals, you have the sensors to indicate and also sounds, but it would have been extra nice to have an actual camera. And the last thing that I see in a lot of other premium luxury EVs is a digital rear view mirror. That helps because at night, instead of being blinded by the other headlights, it kind of softens it. And you also get a wider field of view. So when you're making those turns on the highway, those blind spots are less distracting because you can actually see them. Here's the display. It's kind of positioned in a weird spot because usually it's raised up more. So I could understand why it's in a lower profile setting, less distracting, but at the same time, if you're looking at it as you're driving, you want to look at it, you have all the other displays, you're looking farther down. But a cool thing I like about this one here is that you actually hide it away so you have extra room. If you need it to come out, then of course you just swipe there. That is pretty neat and I don't see that in many other EVs. Hessian Lake, wow, this is nice. Oh, we're in Rockland County, okay, okay, okay. And here we are, safe and sound. There we go, look at these lucid airs. It's been only a day. Can I say they've designed and engineered the most desirable midsize EV? Performance-wise, yes. 
but when it comes to efficiency, I gotta really test it out for that range. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is it worth $70,000? Don't forget to follow us on social at Tom's Guide. I'm John V, and I'll see you in my next video.